Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of thoracentesis. The thoracentesis is also called pleural tear, also called thoracentesis. This is an invasive procedure. Invasive procedure. by a surgical puncture in the chest wall to the pleural cavity. to aspirate fluid. So, this is an invasive procedure by a surgical puncture in the chest wall to the pleural cavity to aspirate fluid. Okay. So, what are the indications for what are the indications for thoracentesis? Indications. Indication is the plural effusion. Plural effusion. Or hemothorax. or chylothorax okay when there is collection of fluid in the interpleural space the potential space between the parietal pleura and visceral pleura we call it pleural effusion we may have collection of blood that is hemothorax collection of lymphatic fluid chyle we call it chyle thorax these are the indications okay we have many reasons for pleural effusion like that of tuberculosis or some type of malignancy lung cancer, maybe metastatic cancer, maybe heart failure, liver failure, kidney failure or as a complication of pneumonia. Okay, We may have pleural effusion. We like to draw the fluid from the intrapleural space both for therapeutic purpose as well as for diagnostic purpose okay so therapeutic and also diagnostic okay so we got the thoracocentesis and its indication now we go what is the preferred site for thoracocentesis? Preferred site for thoracocentesis. Thoracentesis. Okay. So, preferred site for thoracentesis, according to Keith Moore, K. L. Moore, clinically oriented anatomy, it should be in the ninth intercostal space ninth intercostal space mid axillary line mid axillary line mid axillary line is a line between the anterior axillary fold posterior axillary fold if we draw a vertical line in between the anterior and posterior axillary fold, we'll get the mid axillary line. So ninth intercostal space. So this is the ninth rib. Then this is the tenth rib. This is the ninth intercostal space. Mid axillary line. 
during expiration okay expiratory phase of respiration okay we got the the preferred side but it depends on the physician and some book also say that it may be in the along the posterior axillary line or it may not be exact in the ninth intercostal space maybe in the eighth intercostal space it also depends on the collection of fluid so usually it is done below the level of the fluid so that we can draw the fluid okay so this is the preferred side ninth intercostal space mid axillary line during expiratory phase of respiration okay we got that patient may be seated maybe on one side depending on the situation and patient's condition okay so we got the preferred side then what anatomical structures are encountered in thoracentesis okay anatomical structures encountered in thoracentesis thoracentesis or plural tap or pluracentesis so from outside inside we have the skin this is number one this is skin then superficial fascia this is superficial fascia so suppose number one is here number two is here superficial fascia then we get the external intercostal number three okay one two three external intercostal muscle then we'll get the internal intercostal muscle then we we'll get the innermost intercostal muscle okay this is number four then we'll get here the number four and we we'll get here some fiber number five innermost intercostal muscle okay then we we'll get the endothoracic fascia endothoracic fascia okay endothoracic fascia then we we'll get here we we'll get endothoracic fascia we we'll get here endothoracic fascia okay. put the number here number six is here endothoracic fascia then we we'll get the parietal fluid Parietal pleura, we can say it costal pleura, specifically pleura, the costal pleura. Okay, pleura. So we got, then we are inside the interpleural space, and here, this is the interpleural space. Here, this is the liver, this is the lung this is covered by pulmonary pleura pulmonary pleura on the chest wall we have the costal pleura here is the liver covered by diaphragm this is diaphragmatic pleura 
diaphragmatic pleura. Okay, and this space is the this is a recess. This is the dependent part of the pleural cavity in an ambulatory patient. This is the costo diaphragmatic recess of pleura. Costo diaphragmatic recess of pleura. Okay, we got that. And this is the neurovascular bundle here in the costal group. We know that this is one rib, the neurovascular bundle. Neurovascular, another rib is here. We'll get the neurovascular bundle here. Neurovascular bundle in the costal group area. We'll get neurovascular bundle. We'll get the vein, artery, nerve vein artery null we get some collateral here collateral here so this is the costal group neurovascular bundle containing intercostal vein intercostal artery intercostal null and we have some collateral of this vein artery and nerve on the superior border of a rib this is one rib this is another rib this is the costal group Coastal group containing neurovascular bundle. These are the collaterals over the lower part of the intercostal space above the lower rib. Collaterals of the intercostal artery, intercostal vein, intercostal nerve. Okay, so now we got the anatomical structures. What will be encountered in case of thoraco? In case of thoracentesis, okay. In case of thoracentesis, so these all structure. We don't go to the visceral pleura. We don't go to the lung. How we will pass our needle? So needle should go obliquely upward. Okay. This is the needle here. It should follow the lower part of the intercostal space to protect the to protect the neurovascular bundle, but a bit up to avoid damage to the collateral, it should go to the costal diaphragmatic recess to draw fluid. This is the shearings. We draw fluid by by plunging out. Okay, so that is the way we do the do the thoracentesis or plural tech or Plural synthesis. Okay. Is there any contraindication to, to do thorough synthesis? Contraindication. Okay. Contraindications are the hemorrhagic disorder or bleeding disorder. Okay. Or very small fluid small fluid okay and it should be done under ultrasonic guidance so that we may not miss anything we may not damage the the lung or may not damage the liver okay so it should be guided by the ultrasonic support okay then we got the contraindication complication do we have any complication complications of thoracentesis thoracentesis yes you might have complication like that of the maybe puncture of the lung okay so we may have pneumothorax and we may have hepatic injury or liver injury and we may have hemorrhage okay depending on the situation how much amount of fluid we will aspirate it depends on the size of the pleural effusion
in some condition it may be more than one liter of fluid especially in case of tb effusion or some type of cancer may collect a lot of fluid so we may take at least one liters of fluid the purpose of taking out the fluid is that we study the fluid first of all if we remove the fluid lung will be expanded again so there will be good lung function test and also we draw the this is therapeutic we also draw the fluid to study this the the cause of pleural effusion is it tuberculosis is it due to some type of cancer we may get some malignant cell is it is it due to some type of parasite whether it is exudate or transudate so we study the fluid to diagnose the disease so that's all about the thoracentesis if you like my video please support my channel please subscribe me share the information with your friend if you have any question please feel free to ask me have a nice day bye now